hello everyone. I actually work with Dr. Sharwal and Lucas Luther. Um, my colleague will be going next after me um, in the anaerobic digestion project at Colorado State University. And um, I am going to be talking about a system that we proposed and successfully operated um, to digest the high solids calories produced um, in Colorado. Um, so, Dr. Sharma has pretty much given a good background, but just to breeze through. So, um, Corrado is actually the second highest producer of cattle manure in the United States, um, producing around 90 million tons of manure per year. Um, that's quite a lot of um, poop. Um, and it's very difficult to manage this large amount of manure that's been produced. And um, it's typically being dumped out in manure piles where they slowly um, be they are degraded and there are methane emissions into the atmosphere and environmental impacts just like uh, we talked about earlier and uh, if uh, this high solid cow waste that is produced uh, would be digested um, it has a high potential of biomass energy which could be equivalent to 46 billion BTU per day um, in other words it could be around I think 600 million watts per hour um, and it would be able to pro meet the demands of 42% of Colorado's residential electricity um, consumption. So um, that's huge potential. And this is a very similar map to what Dr. Sharwell already showed us. Um, and like you can see, out of the 192 operational anaerobic digesters digesting manure in, in the United States, Colorado has only one um, digesting hog waste um, in Lamar. So, um, when we think about, okay, so there's so much manure produced and there are no digesters digesting cow waste. Um, the reason why is mainly because, like we discussed, um, air climate, and so the produced cow manure is very, very dry. Um, lab tests show that um, they have around 90 percentage of total solids. Um, and um, like we know, anaerobic digestion requires a lot of water for hydrolysis to break down these complex compounds into soluble compounds and we have very limited water resources to do that. So um, this is again just a quick overview of the different kinds of um, conventional digesters um, that have been used uh, for anaerobic digestion and like you can see um, the, the range of total solids that they can handle is from 2% to 14%. So um, typically just to give an example if we were to digest 1 kg of manure um, we would require around um, 80 to 90 liters of water um, to digest it using these digesters. So that's a lot of water. Um, so, which is why, um, which is when um, dry digesters um, come into um, the scenario. Um, leach fed reactors are um, anaerobic di the digestion reactors that can handle um, high solids waste um, and um, anything above 40%. Um, and they have very, very low water requirements. Um, they don't, uh, we don't have to dilute the waste, but uh, water is just required to saturate the waste so that it can break down the complex compounds into soluble compounds. Um, it has very low energy requirements because there's no mixing, there's no pumping, um, and uh, studies have proved to prove that the, it has good methane yields. Um, however, um, few limitations have been observed. Um, LBRs are known to have um, clogging in them. Um, so people have used bulking agents like straw, like inert substances like pistachio shells or plastic beads to increase the porosity in the in the leach bed reactor. Um, but however, that leads to um, increased uh, reactor volumes, and that's not the best. Um, and also at this prolonged startup time because you don't have enough water into it and um, studies have shown uh, VFA accumulation leading to souring and um, increasing EPH and um, leading to system upsets. So this is the proposed system um, that um, we are suggesting and in this the hydrolysis and methanogenesis are carried out in two different um, reactors. Um, and my area of concentration is basically looking into how a trickle flow leach bed reactor uh, functions, what happens in the reactor, um, how well is hydrolysis carrying out in the reactor, um, what are the leaching potentials and typically the methane potentials of the leach um, samples. So um, what happens in the system is water is trickled through the reactor um, slowly breaking down uh, when you are. 
and the leachate, soluble leachate is then sent into a high-grade anaerobic digester where the bacteria feed on it and produce biogas. Um, hydrolysis is very important because it's not exactly the stage where biogas is formed, but it is the stage where um, it, it uh, makes the complex substances um, available for the bacteria to transform it into biogas then. So that's what I worked on. And um, this is just an overview of what we did. Uh, we collected manure from JBS Five River feedlot, um, and um, it it was an open dry feedlot. And when it was uh, with dry scraping, and so because of cattle stamping on the manure, sometimes the manure chunks were really huge. Um, however, uh, the feedlot has a on-site mechanical chopper that they use for their pre-existing gasifier. And so um, that is the pulverized manure right there. And we collected it in five gallon buckets. Um, and we tried to collect like um, all like the manure on the top. We dug deep, um, sort of to get a variety um, in the manure that we are collecting. And then to have a homogeneous sample of the manure, what we did is we sorted. So we collected manure in like 60 buckets. And then we came back to the lab. We opened up everything. And we individually scooped out manure from each bucket into nine different parts. And we did that for every bucket that we collected. And so that each part of the sorted manure would be homogeneous. It would have a good blend of the entire, like it would be representative of what we would find at the feedlot. Um, and then we started loading our reactors. So this is how our um, trickle flow leach rate reactor looked like. Um, it was fitted with a modern cap. And then um, we put in like five inches of gravel um, to support the manure in the reactor. Um, and then we filled it up with manure. And we actually compressed our manure in the reactor to correlate to a full size um, implemented uh, digester. Because in a real system, when, when there are huge reactors and you're putting in manure, um, there's compression because you're adding more manure and the manure in the bottom of the reactor gets compressed. So we wanted to compress the, the manure in these reactors so as to get a good idea, a good correlation. So what we did, we wanted to decide on what, what amount of energy do we apply or to what extent do we need to compress this manure. Um, so we applied different and different amount of energy on the manure and we saw that um, if we applied, for example, 50 joules of energy and say 150, 200, it was the same. It was, there was not much difference um, after applying like 50 joules of energy. So we set that as our limit. We were like, okay, we apply 50 joules of energy and there's compression and then the pores in the reactor are pretty, um, not much difference in them. Um, and we um, used weights um, to do the compression. And then finally, we used a layer of sand on top of our manure bed. And that is exactly what helped us to disperse water through the reactor and help us overcome the clogging issues in the LVR. Instead of using bulking agents like pistachio shells or plastic beads, um, this is just um, the main breakthrough in the, in the system. And finally, we put it with, uh, closed it up with a top distribution cap um, for even distribution of water through the column. We um, supply oxygen stripped water into um, the reactors. And we collected composite leachate samples um, from the reactor instead of grab samples. That way we could um, trap all of the leaching potential from the reactor. We maintained the reactors at 35 degrees Celsius in the mesophilic range um, with the help of um, an insulated walk-in room made of styrofoam and supported with um, a pipeline frame. And uh, we uh, conducted tests uh, many tests actually, and mainly, so this is, you can look at it, um, we conducted tests pre-digestion and post-digestion on the manure in the reactor. And as you can see, approximately 23% of cattle manure was hydrolyzed in the typical low leach bed reactors. And an average um, of um, volatile solid uh, reductions was around 71.8%, which is a very good um, number. Um, and we also tested the chemical oxygen demand um, in the pre-digested and post-digested waste in the reactors. And we also tested the COD in the uh, leachate that was collected. And as you can see, approximately 66% of COD was, was lost or leached out from the system. 
and um, saying, and that tallies out in the leachate, around 44 percentage of total solids was leached out over the period of six weeks or 42 days. Um, and we also conduct, conducted biochemical methane potential tests. We carried these out in tiny um, syringes, 140 ml syringes, um, completely anaerobic environment. Uh, we put in the carbon cells, which is our leachate. We put in a stream of bugs, which is our inoculum. We got it from Drake water facility. And we also put in nutrient solution to support, to provide a, like an energy drink for the bugs to grow for the carbon cells. So, and we tested uh, for the methane potential and we had very good results um, of, of about 0.43 liters of methane per gram of COD. Um, so typically what, what, we, uh, what I found out was that the proposed multi-stage leach pit reactor system was the best technology fit for digesting these high solids react uh, solid waste that are produced in Colorado and they have good hydrolysis efficiency and have shown good uh, methane potential and um, there is a um, great opportunity to do this in a big pilot scale what my colleague Luke will talk about more um, and yeah pretty much that and I would love to take questions. Could you go back to about the fourth slide? Okay. Uh, your schematic. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm interested in that composting tank and the and could you go into a little bit more detail on explaining that drawing? If you stopped right there. Right. As I understand your explanation before you got to the composting. Okay. So the leachate that is collected is composited in the composting tank by the acetogenesis and the fermentation occurs before it goes into a high rate anaerobic digester um, and there is recycling back and forth. Uh, we recycle the leachate back to the trickle flow leachate bed reactor so as to decrease the water requirements even more. Um, but yeah, it's basically the uh, fermentation that is taking place in the composting tank, if that makes sense. Yeah, this composting is an aerobic process. You want an anaerobic process. So help me understand what's going on here. So that's a typer. It should be compositing. Compositing. Oh, oh, Sorry. Oh, My bad. Okay. <laughs> I was just about to All right. Never mind. Then. I'm sorry. It said it's good. Come on. I'm really sorry. My bad. <laughs> Normalize that there. I have because we did not add nutrient solution to these. It was just in syringes. But this is COD. Is this the COD reduction of the, the leaching material? Uh, yeah. The one top there is um, in the in the waste, and bottom there is on the leaching. Okay. So the one the is this. Is Solid so, yeah, so before we put in and after we stopped the system, we took a sample out and then we tested for COD. And this is the, the one on the right is the... Over the, the period of time that we... From the solid. From, yeah, yeah, over a period of time, the leachate that was, that was collected from the trickle flow leachate reactors that was tested and accumulative of uh, the COD that was collected from the reactor was a 24 percentage 